One of the primary tools that any server administrator will tell you that they use for troubleshooting is a tool that can also be used to help you troubleshoot Windows 11. And that is the event viewer, okay? And the use of the event logs. All right, so let's take a look. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on start and I'm gonna go ahead and search, just simply put in the word event. And guess what? It takes me right to the event viewer. Let me go ahead and let's blow this up so we can see it. Now here in the event viewer, we have a lot of things we can look at. There's some custom views that we could create, as well as some Windows logs, and I'm gonna actually expand those Windows logs. Additionally, let me go ahead and move this over a little bit. We have some applications and services logs, as well as some subscriptions. Now here's the thing. This is a basic troubleshooting course. And a lot of this stuff really, like I said, is kind of used at the server level. So what I'm gonna stay focused on is these Windows logs. That's why I expanded them. And from these Windows logs, there are three main logs that should be looked at. They are the application log, which will show me different events that have taken place very specifically related to the various applications on our system. There is the security log, which is specifically for what's called auditing, where we can go ahead and just look at different activities that have taken place on our system. I'll click on setup. You don't really look at it very much, but this would help you with anything that had to do with actually setting up the system, installing an application, things like that. In fact, this very top one, you'll notice it says information. It says down at the bottom, it says package KB5012170 was successfully changed to the installed state. Okay, so it basically says, apparently we finished installing. It's part of a Windows update, I believe. But then we finally have the system. Actually, before I get to the system log, there is the forwarded events, which you'll notice is blank. Nothing we're going to deal with here. So that's why I'm saying finally we get to the system log. And this is the primary log that will help you when it comes to troubleshooting. I would say in order, you look at the system log, followed by the application log, followed by the security log. But really the system log is the one that's going to help you when you're having a system problem. So let's see what kind of events we see here. Well, we have information events, right? We have these circles with the little exclamation mark in it there, the little I really, it's not an exclamation mark, it's just an I. So that's an information entry. And that literally is just what it sounds like. It just tells you something has happened. You can click on any one of these and it will just tell you something has happened, okay? You'll notice here, I'm actually getting a lot of information things that have to do with time. And it has to do with that I'm working with a virtual machine and just because it's the nature of the beast when it comes to teaching stuff that sometimes I will revert back and forth between different snapshots and things like that, which take us forward and back through different periods of time. So I'm getting that is popping up here. But if I were to scroll further down, we can see there are some other things going on, which talk about like the background intelligent transfer service. Here it says, I don't even know what this one is. <laughs> the access history in Hive. What does it say? It says was cleared, updating four keys. Okay. Now I want to point out that it's interesting that I said to you like, here's one. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Well, with each one of these entries, not only do you see the words that it describes to you here, but if you look down below that, you'll see here, that it will tell you what log it came from, what the source was, it has to do with the kernel, and it gives you an event ID, event ID 16. And that is helpful because what you can do, if you wanna know what that means, is you could go out and you could do an internet search. You could do an internet search that says, hey, what happens when I'm getting a kernel general event 16? And there may be an article you'll find that'll explain what that is. All right, let me go ahead and scroll back up to the top because I wanna show you that besides the information entries, we also have a yellow triangle, and this time it is an exclamation point, where it is a warning. Now a warning, I wanna tell you what a warning is, is that means that the system's telling you, we haven't actually had a failure, but something isn't the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so again, 
with the bouncing back and forth with the changing of the time, it says here the time service has set the time with an offset. And I don't know how many seconds that is, but basically it was a warning saying, hey, it looks like the time maybe is off from what the real time is. Okay. And these things you'll notice all happened in a row, like boop, 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 boop. Because what it was doing is it was getting it all put into place when I reverted a machine. It's probably what happened there. So a warning, again, tells you something isn't right, but you haven't experienced an actual failure yet. So you may want to look into it. But then we have the red circle, again, with the exclamation point in it, where it says error. This means something actually has gone wrong. Right, something isn't right, and you've had some kind of failure. Okay, and so basically, it's saying that the time service detected that it needs to be changed by, and again, it had that huge number of seconds, and it says that the time service will not change the system time by more than fifty-four thousand seconds. So it wants you to actually go in and make sure everything's okay. You need to know this is more of a server issue, but if your clock is not set right, you will have all sorts of other failures. So that just gives you an idea of how you can use these event logs to help you troubleshoot a problem. Maybe we're having a problem with this machine. I might realize, oh my goodness, that it's a time issue. The clock isn't right. Now, the one last thing I want to show you before we end this here is I want to show you that over on the right, there's an option here that says filter current log. This is a great way where we can go ahead and filter based upon something specific we might be looking for. If I want to keep it simple, well, I might just say, hey, you know what? Filter for errors, right? I'm going to check the box saying, show me all the errors. And I'll click OK. And now, instead of seeing every entry, I only am seeing the error entries. OK, so it's only showing me, based upon the filtering here, that out of the 867 total events, we're only seeing 15 of them. So we can see all the different errors that have taken place on this particular system. Or if I go back to filtering the, the log, Maybe I want to see the warnings. So now I see there's 82 warnings that I could go through and see what's going on here. Here's a disk warning telling me something about the logical block address, which was having an issue. All right. So maybe I'm having a disk problem. Well, now I can see and maybe start looking up articles as to why that may be. All right. Or you can go ahead and click clear filter. And then now I see all 867 entries, which I could scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and it becomes a little bit of a mess. All right, so that is how we can use the Event Viewer to help us troubleshoot issues in Windows 11.